I'm extremely happy to be a part of this international conference and share with you some recent developments in mathematics, especially from application perspective. So my lecture essentially is mathematical modeling. Okay. I thank Paul for his nice words about me. And I know him as a small boy in Trinal Valley. And all his family members are well known to me. So thank you very much, sir. So I'll start with a simple problem. You to conduct an examination. There are hundred subjects. You want to finish the examination with minimum number of slots. How will you go about it? I want to schedule an examination timetable. That's all. Hundred subjects. If you say hundred slots are needed, no one will appreciate. So what's the minimum number of slots by which you can complete the entire examination process? How will you find that? Is there a mathematics behind it? That's a simple question. What is the minimum number of slots required to complete the examination schedule for 100 subjects? That's all the question. First, when, when can you put two subjects in the same slot? What's the condition? Two subjects in the same Two subjects can be put in the same slot if and only if no students take both. That's all. If one student wants to take both examination, you can't put it in the same schedule. Right? So, I have 100 subjects. I will put a line, edge between two subjects, if there is at least one student who takes both the subjects. So, I get a graph. So, the 100 subjects is converted to a graph with 100 vertices. Okay. Now, if two vertices are non-adjacent, I can put that examination in the same slot, right? So you know coloring, giving colors to the vertices of the graph. Different vertices will get, dif adjacent, adjacent vertices will get different colors. So if you take all subjects getting the same color, what does it mean? It's an independent set. For all those subjects, exams can be put in one single slot. So, the number of slots is nothing but the minimum number of colors required for that graph. That's a chromatic number of the graph. So, you see, examination schedule problem is just finding the chromatic number of a graph. Very, very simple. Okay? So, but when you give it to the controller of exam, they say 12 slots are sufficient. He's not satisfied with that answer. You tell me in slot one what subjects to put, in slot two what subjects to put, and so on. That means you need the coloring of the graph. All vertices getting color one, you put it in slot one. All subjects getting color two, put it in slot two. Like that, the exam timetable is over. So scheduling is simply a graph coloring problem. But we want the actual coloring. And that is more difficult. I have developed a tool to get the coloring in a very nice way. And the motivation comes from Sudoku Basil. You know how to solve a Sudoku Basil? How many of your families are Sudoku Basil? So lot of you. Okay? So you have nine cross nine thing. Some entries are there. You have to fill up the remaining entries. So that every row Every column and the three, three, three subsquare all have one to nine. So this is Sudoku person. Okay. So I take a Sudoku person. Okay. Fine. I look at it in a different way. I take the 81 cells. So 81 cells, that forms my vertex set. Each cell I take as a vertex. Two cells are adjacent. If they are in the same row, 
or in the same column and the same three cross is subsquare. I get a graph. So I get a graph G. So this row is a computer graph, this row is a computer graph, this column is a computer graph, and this is a computer graph. Like that. The three cross T subsquares are computer graphs. Each row is complete, each column is complete. I get a graph. So since there's a complete graph of nine vertex sitting, what's the chromatic number of the graph? Nine. So chromatic number of the graph is nine. Okay. So what's the solution to the Sudoku puzzle? It gives a coloring. The solution to the Sudoku puzzle is actually a coloring of the graph. So solving a Sudoku puzzle is simply solving a graph coloring problem. But no one, has, no one looked at it from this perspective. Okay? So solving a Sudoku puzzle is simply solving a graph coloring problem. That some entries are there like this. Some entries are there. And remaining entries you have to fill. That means some words are colored. You have to color the remaining vertices. So Sudoku puzzle is simply extending a given coloring to the coloring of the whole graph. Okay? This is the way in which I looked at Sudoku puzzle. And developed a new concept called Sudoku number for a general graph. And that paper got published just two months back. And within this short span of time, people have started working on that problem. So people are ahead of me now in solving this uh, particular parameter. Okay. Oh. Which key we use to move the slide? Slide is not moving. It's correct to move a model. I will do it. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 So see, this is what I have told you now. You take as for a Sudoku puzzle, you take the 81 cells as a vertex set, nine rows, nine columns, and three cross is subsquares, all of them make it complete. The chromatic number is nine, and solving a Sudoku puzzle is simply extending the given coloring of a subgraph to the coloring of the whole graph. And what is interesting is, for a Sudoku puzzle, there's only one, Sudoku, one solution. One Sudoku puzzle will not have two solutions. Okay? So Sudoku puzzle has a unique solution. So, fundamental question, what is the minimum number of clues needed for a Sudoku puzzle? Any idea? You're solving a Sudoku puzzle. What's the minimum number of clues given to you? So what is that minimum number of clues needed for a Sudoku puzzle? It's a big unsolved problem. <laughs> I'll tell you. What is the minimum number of clues to be filled so that it can be uniquely extended? The solution will come up. So what's the minimum number of clues for a Sudoku person? As of today, people have constructed a Sudoku puzzle with 17 clues. As of today, 17 clues Kuranja Kulula puzzle will that. Okay? So 17 clues. You have to construct 116 to contradict this. So, what is the minimum number of clues needed for a Sudoku puzzle? People believe that there is no Sudoku puzzle with 16 clues. Okay? 
there is no sudoku puzzle with 16 clues and some one year back a group of computer scientists published a paper saying that there is no sudoku puzzle with 16 clues but unfortunately the proof is fully computer oriented no one is able to understand the proof something like four color theory mari proof is there but no one is able to understand the proof and the experts think that the proof may be wrong will be wrong ha ah. so likely that the proof is wrong so i started looking at uh four cross four case smaller smaller case i'll give an example to you so i consider the four cross four sudoku puzzle okay four cross four okay yeah, remove okay i gave it to my student construct a sudoku puzzle for four cross four with minimum number of clues see for nine cross nine they say it is 17 but no one knows the proof for four cross four what is the answer i asked my student and then we worked it out we were able to manage it four clues four clues for them i'll give that four clues now i constructed it after a uh, long uh, effort so three here I did, I constructed this puzzle. I have given you four clues. Okay, I have given you four clues. I tell you how I managed. See, I want to force the entry. So you see, three cannot come here. So three is forced here. So I am going to force numbers. So. Three is forced here. Okay. Once three is forced here, four is forced here. Because <laughs> each row must have one, two, three, four. Each column must have one, two, three, four. Okay. Now, anything else is forced now? One, one, one is forced now, right? Because one is not here. so one is forced now this one is forced now now three is forced right so four is forced so two is forced therefore here two is forced huh right now everything will be over that's all unique so for four cross four i am able to manage with four clues and i proved that three clues are not sufficient so if this is a case what do you need what do you need 17 clues for 9 cross 9 so i also believed that the proof that 16 clues are enough is wrong okay 16 clues are needed may be wrong so question how to construct a sudoku puzzle with 16 clues see unfortunately people give sudoku puzzle to solve you solve 
how do they construct this sudoku puzzle do anyone know it is kept as a secret no one has revealed the method of constructing a sudoku puzzle so some artificial intelligent technique is used i don't know how we a sudoku puzzle is constructed that is completely kept as a secret because they are selling it to newspapers every day you give a sudoku puzzle for one year if they get some money out of it so constructing the sudoku puzzle is kept as a secret this is the problem okay so now i am trying to develop an algorithm to construct a sudoku puzzle use graph theory for that because i have converted to a graph theory problem so you see so i defined sudoku number of any graph sudoku number you take a subgraph give colors to the subgraph if it is uniquely extendable it is called sudoku coloring what's the minimum number of vertices to be colored for a sudoku coloring that i call sudoku number of the graph yes and of g see completely new parameter the sudoku number of a graph i'll give a very simple example oh okay, this here is a situation here is a coloring is it clear see i have a partial coloring only four vertices are colored you have to extend it to a coloring of the whole graph if the graph has chromatic number 3 because there's a triangle so the graph has chromatic number 3 okay now you see i am giving extension so here i have choice 2 or 3 here also i have 2 or 3 okay. here anything yes all its neighbors are uncolored so see i have given you two different extensions for the same coloring okay two different extensions because you see here you have one here you have three the extensions are different so this is a extendable coloring but not a sudoku coloring sudoku coloring means only one extension is possible okay is an extendable coloring but not a sudoku coloring whereas here same graph i have taken i have given colors like this now you see this is forced because neighbors are given 203 you only three colors available so this is forced one once this is forced what happens just think this is forced as one so what's the color color list for this graph for this vertex 2 and 3 cas one is already present what's the color list for this there's also 2 and 3 what's the color list for this there's also 2 and 3 that means i can't manage coloring the three vertices with two colors so this is not extendable see this is not extendable so you see a coloring may not be extendable as a coloring of the whole graph okay whereas this is a sudoku coloring is a is a uniquely extendable so i have given 2 2 1 1 so what's the color list for this 1 3 color list for this is 1 3 here color list is 2 3 2 3 so this is the color list available for giving colors for the remaining vertices i will prove that you cannot give 2 here you cannot give 2 here why 
suppose you give two here then this two goes away so this will become three so if this, this is two this will become three so what is the color for this now one so what's the color for this now see one not colorable because one is already used three is already used so this is you cannot give two here if you give two here you get a contradiction okay therefore you must give three once you give three here this three goes away it becomes two okay this three goes away it becomes one and uniquely colorable okay this is a sudoku coloring so i explained the concept what is sudoku coloring okay so now i am interested in finding the sudoku number of the standard graph so my conjecture is for the standard sudoku puzzle the sudoku number of the sudoku puzzle 9 is this is my conjecture i have given it to my student to work on this that's i can construct sudoku puzzle 16 colors 16 clues this is the very beautiful concept coming from a small puzzle that's all so i converted the whole problem as a graph coloring problem okay let us take for example a very simple example take a path on five vertices what's the minimum number of colors to be given so that it is uniquely extendable chi is 2 what is the sudoku number for this graph what is the minimum number of vertices to be colored so that extension is unique right so sudoku number of p7 what is sudoku number of p7 suppose it is just one it is just one yes suppose you give color one here over oh, everything is unique now yes once you give color one you have to give only two here so once you give two here you have to give one here so one to one to alternate that's all the color is uniquely fixed so sudoku number of path is one only sudoku number of any bipartite graph is one okay sudoku number of any bipartite graph is one sudoku number for the complete graph is n minus 1 because if we color only n minus 2 colors the remaining can be colored in two different ways so extension will not be unique okay any 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 problem i can you can tell if, if there's any problem no no question this is only true for perfect graphs right perfect graph right chi is equal to 9 and omega is also 9 right Now focus only on perfect graph. Right. For our Sudoku graph, it's a perfect graph. Yeah. So you say, with this Sudoku number concept, we can try to solve so many problems. For example, in examination scheduling, you take the graph, give colors to some vertices, you extend it. Once you extend it, you get the schedule, schedule problem solved. So Sudoku color number and the Sudoku number serves as an excellent tool for solving problems. Okay. I will tell, tell such so some results.
Salah's examples. Sudoku number is one, if and only if it is bipartite graph. Okay. Sudoku number is one, if and only if it's a bipartite graph. Because bipartite graph only two colors. Okay. Suppose you have partite set V1 and V2, you give color one here. That's all. You have to give color two everywhere and color one everywhere. So for bipartite graph, the Sudoku number is just one. It's if and only if. Okay, it's if and only if. Because if there are three colors, it's not sufficient to call just one vertex. Okay? Fine. See, C4 is bipartite. I give one here. Can you uniquely extend it? Can we extend it? Because for both this, I have to give two. No choice. For both this, I have to give. And for this, I have to give one. So it's uniquely extendable. This is C5. Do it for C5. Yeah. Only one. Yes. You have to have minimum two, color, two vertices, you have to color. Yeah. So for C5, Sudoku number is two. For C4, Sudoku number is one. C4 is bipartite. Okay. So you see, the Sudoku number serves as a very, very powerful tool for solving graph coloring problems. Extremely powerful tool. So people have started using this tool now to solve so many practical problems of interest. So you see, for the whole class, we are through. One entry, how many how many entries are needed? I want to force. See, this is why I have done like this is this forces three here. Once three is forced, next this is forced. So how to force the entry? What's the minimum number of entries for forcing for one vertex? For nine class nine, what do you think? What's the minimum number of entries to force one entry to start with? That will be eight. I guess. Because we no one knows the answer. For Sudoku Basil is nine, no one knows the answer. So simple, but still people don't know the answer. Because people are trying to construct puzzle with 16 clues. So far, they are not able to manage. So far, they are not able to manage. That's why I want to develop an algorithm for constructing a Sudoku puzzle. That algorithm using graph theory and graph coloring. What is the minimum number of vertices to be colored? So that you can extend it for the whole graph. 